Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to my 100th Tipsy Tuesday, my live quilting chat. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here. I can't believe we made it. I'm so happy that you are all joining us tonight, helping us celebrate our 100th Tipsy Tuesday episode. Whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, make sure you send us lots of hearts tonight. Thumbs up. And of course, send us comment. Make sure to start, start with telling us your name and where you're tuning in from. On tonight's show, of course, we'll be celebrating the show and finishing our strip along with a great strip joints uh, slideshow. I will also be showing you a video uh, and give you some tips on binding 60 degree corners by machine. So if you have, are new to us, make sure you follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you'll never miss a show. We're gonna have some fun tonight, that is for sure. We also have a giveaway every single show. Two winners every single show, $25 gift cards are up for grabs. One is chosen just randomly from your comments. So of course, the more you comment, the better your chances are. And then we have a question at the end. For those of you that cannot watch us live, you still have a chance to win. So from our last show last week, our, my give, giveaway question was, which of my new patterns was your favorite? The new patterns are here. I'm gonna show you a little bit later. Um, our winner is Sonia Johnston, and her answer was hard choice, choosing my favorite new pattern. They all look fun, maybe Astrid first. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, it is our 100th show. Can you believe it? We've done a hundred of these. That is wild. Uh, of course, ooh, ooh, Mr. Ooh. Honey Producer has been an integral part of every single Tipsy Tuesday episode. So we've done this together all the way, all the way. So all I think way. it is uh, proper to really crack one of these open, even though we normally don't drink on Tipsy Tuesdays. Um, this is the exception. When we do it for the hundredth time, it is an exception. So yes. I gotta have it. <laughs> Woo! Cheers, everybody. We are gonna pour this into a, a little bit of a mix here because we're not much of champagne drinkers straight up unless it's a really special occasion and really good champagne. So we're making mimosas at night, right? Nice. You know, they're a little amped up because they are evening mimosas, but that's how we roll. That's, that's your favorite cocktail, isn't it? It is my favorite. So, Perfect. favorite for Mr. HP. We're going to toast in this. You got to come over here. And if you have something in your glass, whatever it is, toast with us, everybody. Cheers. Here's Cheers. to uh, 100 episodes and 100 more. Hundred you got to look at me. Oh, hi. Hey, I'm looking at the people. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, delicious. This is the nighttime version, uh, for sure. Uh, anyway, so if you have been watching us for from the start, from this first Tipsy Tuesday episode, please tell us in the comments. Say, me, 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 if you have been watching us this whole time. Now, if you are new to us, that is also, we welcome everybody and thank you so much for being such a big part of it and supporting us throughout. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have people that were watching. So uh, a, little, a little history here. We, our first Tipsy Tuesday episode was on May 2nd, 2018. So almost three years ago. But of course, this was back when I was traveling, so I only did those shows when I was in town. So that was the only time we did Tipsy Tuesdays back then. So in 2018, uh, we did 17 shows. In 2019, we did 22. And in 2020, we did 45. So big change there. And in 2021, this is the 17th show so far. So we've had the same amount of shows this year as we did all of 2018. So that's, that's great. Now, uh, if you wondered if I've changed in, those, in this time, in, throughout these 100 episodes, let's just put a photo up of our first one. We had humble beginnings. Our set was not the greatest. Our cameras were not the sharpest. <laughs> our lighting was uh, whatever we had. And it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Especially for back then. 
Now, have I changed? Have I aged? No. I think I look pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. We're not stepping let's on see, the scale see. or anything. Don't, don't move. Don't move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The same. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for that. I did. I did do up today, and it is was a you know it's a celebration. So I wore sparkle today. You know that's his own color, sparkles. And so then and then I had uh, actually had my hair done. So um, I don't normally I'm not that good at doing my hair. So it was a special occasion. Anyways. Um, Let's kick this off. There's lots to do tonight and lots to show you. I wanted to just quick show you uh, the, the patterns are in. They look beautiful. Uh, I'm going to show you them here in the overhead. We have grab and go totes, steamy windows, and Astrid. And then, of course, the little guys, little Jojo, little Helena, little Trixie. If you have never seen uh, my printed versions of my patterns, I like them to be, they're all printed on one piece of paper so they, you never lose a page, full color. So flips out like that. Astrid is a little bit thicker because um, there's a bigger fold out. So it will fold out like this. So that is the new patterns. They are being, they were being bagged today. Some of them went out the door today and the rest of it will, all your orders will go out tomorrow. Thank you all so much for supporting us in this and ordering little patterns. I cannot wait to see your versions. I'm actually starting to see them already. Uh, your versions of some of these patterns. So that's really great. I'm so excited that you enjoy making them. All right, so we are going to kick this off with, I'm going to start it with a little gift to you. So as you may know, our April project for the Fast and Furious Club went live on the 20th. And it was these really cute pyramid toppers. They are, uh, they are an equilateral triangle, so they have 60 degree corners. Now, they might be intimidating to bind. But believe me, it's not hard at all. I do it by machine all the way. And there's just a little trick or two here, here and there, and you can do it. Anybody can do it. And some practice. Of course, practice is always, is not going to probably be the greatest on the first try. If it is, yay, yay. But practice makes perfect. So, um, and nothing's really perfect or needs to be. Anyway, so I um, had created this video that everybody that subscribed to the Fast and Furious Club or purchased the Pyramid Toppers individually, they got this, this video of how to do the 60 degree corners on a binding um, in their account. But now it is on my YouTube channel and I thought I would play it for you tonight. So let's check it out. Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind a 60 degree corner all by machine. First off, you want to piece your binding, and I had to use two strips so I have one seam in here. And I always double check when I'm starting my binding to make sure that that seam does not land on a corner. It's even more important with a 60 degree corner because there's it's such a sharp corner. So here's my seam, so I'll be good to start here. So then we're going to stitch this on to the back side of the quilt. And I just put a little clip here where I'm going to start and go all the way around. I'm going to show you how to fold the corners to miter the corners. Then I'm going to all, go all the way around. And then we're going to join the binding just like I do with regular binding. You can see more instructions on that in the regular binding video. So when I start sewing, I actually do a little bit of back stitch here in the beginning. And then we're just going to keep sewing down. You'll find this corner right here and you want to stop a little bit over a quarter inch from that corner. It's better to stop further away. Here I want to back stitch. And we're going to fold this corner just like we are with a regular 45 degree corner. I'm just going to clip the threads. Normally I would not clip the threads. When I'm doing a binding, I would just pull it out and then fold. But what we want to do is we just sewed this way. Next, next side is going to be sewing this side. So what we want to take do is take our binding 
and fold it away to create that mitered corner. So we fold it away. Normally we would be doing a 90 degree corner, but this is a sharper corner. So we fold it. So you will see that that fold will be, will be coming here kind of centered between the two edges. But the best way to know if you have the right angle on the fold is looking at this raw edge side of your binding. It should be even with the side that you're going to be stitching down. So once you see that this is even, you can create that little fold here. I just do that by finger pressing. And then I pull my strip back down and to the corner here. And now it's gonna be aligned with that side that you're gonna be stitching next. So you will notice that this fold just looks kind of odd sticking out like this, but that's exactly how it's supposed to be. So you wanna put this under your needle and start stitching right from the edge. And since I clipped my threads, I'm actually going to do a little bit of back stitch. So I stopped to leave a gap here so I can join my binding strip. So if you want more information on that, check out my other binding video by machine. But I'm going to go ahead and do that and then show you how to finish it on the front. Now I have sewn my binding all the way around to the back side of my topper. So now we want to flip it to the front. So take your iron and push the seams out on the back side first. Actually good to have a little bit of steam with this. I like steam, so it really ni lays nice and flat. Makes it easy to fold over. When we get to the corners, all we're gonna do is just flip them over this way. And actually I like to give my sides a little press so they lay flat so it's easier to fold over. Before we create the corners, we wanna clip a little bit away to release some of that bulk. So what I do, I fold this back, and so where the seam goes all the way that side, you wanna go take your scissors and just trim about halfway, half of the seam allowance at an angle down about no more than half an inch, quarter to one half an inch, just to remove a little bit of that, sliver, uh, of that thickness here, because we're gonna have to do, put a little bit of an extra fold in there. So now when we start folding the binding over, I like to press it all the way down before I take it to my sewing machine. So I'm gonna pull this over. And this is why I have my finger protectors because I like to use steam with this and then the steam will not burn my fingers. So I'm gonna press it all the way through the corner on, on this side where I've trimmed. And now to create this perfect miter here, a 60 degree miter, Normally we would just fold this right over and get a 45 degree, but look, that will go all the way to the edge. So we're gonna have to put a little bit of an extra fold in there, and I like to um, make sure that this is straight with the pin. And I press this fold down like this, because we're gonna have to roll it once over, and then again over the corner to create that miter so that miter will go straight from this fold here and out and once you have it rolled in then take your iron on top and you can either pin it or use clips to hold it like this i like to pin it because then i can leave that in as i'm stitching all the way up to it so i just do small silk pins and i like to pin that miter fold in place like this to hold it um, for when I, I do my machine. So you wanna go all the way around and do all three corners like this, clip and trim. And then when it's time to stitch down, what you wanna do is match your top thread with your fabric here, with your binding. And then you can have either your bottom thread match your backing or just be the same color so you don't have any chance of um, the thread color slipping through. And then you just top stitch. I like to just use a straight stitch 
and top stitch all the way around the edge, catching, of course, the corners. I put a few extra stitches in the corners, and then we just stitch all the way around, and we got your perfectly 60 degree mitered corners, all done by machine. Well, that's how easy that is. That 60 degree binding is not hard at all. It takes maybe a little practice to make that fold and make it nice, uh, but that, you know, keep trying, keep practicing. It'll, you'll get there. So a couple of questions that I saw, uh, somebody asked if the finger protectors I was wearing, uh, yes, they do protect your fingers from the steam and the heat. They are just one of the best little things ever. So we do have them in the store. They are now purple, which is even cooler. I only have my blue ones. I actually picked up a couple of purple ones because I need both colors. I got a couple of ironing stations, so that's my excuse. Um, any other questions that popped up on the binding? So, oh, somebody asked if that was a walking foot I was using. Yes, always. I always use piece with a walking foot um, when I'm doing quilt as you go. And then when I, uh, whenever I put binding on, always use my walking foot. Uh, mine is extra super great. All right, any more questions that you see from? Yep, and so now you can go back and watch this video, find it on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the U YouTube channel because then you'll always get notified whenever we put up a new video. Um, okay, everybody's loving the video, so that's great. I am always so happy to show you something different and something new. Yeah, no, any questions off of, um, from YouTube, this one? How wide are your binding strips? So I usually cut mine at two and a quarter. That's my favorite for binding. It gives me enough room so I'm not pulling real hard. Um, and it's, it's, it's great, works great for me. But you can just use whatever, this will apply to whatever you're doing, whatever width uh, strip you want. Two and a quarter works best for me. Some people like two and a half, some people like two inches. I like two and a quarter. And that's double folded binding. Now if I'm working with flannel, I would do a two and a half, a little bit thicker because everything is thicker with flannel. All right, any other questions? Are we ready to move on? We're moving on up to the strip joint, people. We're going to the strip joint one last time in April. So it's time for our part four of our strip along. So let's do it formally, let's do it properly, let's go. Oh, you don't? Oh boy. I was waiting on the music and everything. That was gonna be it, okay. He doesn't have the music. Well, welcome to the strip joint, people. Uh, thanks for being here. Now, first time ever I'm drinking in the strip joint. Well, I didn't quite get my quilt done. So my quilt is not a part of this uh, slideshow because somebody had uh, claimed it and wanted it larger. So I got all of my uh, green, or black blocks with the green outside done. So they're all here. And I'm like halfway done with the black ones. So this will come together this week, I'm sure. And um, hopefully, maybe next week, Gertie and I get to play with it some more. If it is uh, appropriate size for the res recipient. We'll have to see. <laughs> yeah, he's very excited. All right, so I, like I said, mine is not a part of this slideshow, but all of um, your amazing quilts, the ones that you posted or sent me photos of. So let's check out some amazing strip joint quilts from this, the 2021 strip along.
all amazing. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. This is my favorite thing to be able to see one of my patterns done up in so many different ways, inspired all of you. And this was only about 400 quilts, which is truly astonishing. But I know there are so many more still in progress. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. My heart is so full. So that is it until next year for the next strip along. I love it, love it, love it. Well, let's move on with the celebration, peoples. Uh, to celebrate our 100th Tipsy Tuesday episode, of course, I really wanted to be able to offer you something, our, you, our viewers, that really have supported us through this time, uh, something special as a thank you for your loyalty and support through the 100 episodes, and so especially this past year. I mean, this past year has been really hard on all of us, especially in March when my whole business um, did a flop, and then I had to flip-flop out of it <laughs> and figure out something else. So it's really a blessing. So thank you all. I reached out to one of our favorite fabric companies, Louis and Irene. You've seen lots of gorgeous fabric from them. And um, we actually found some great treasures. So Louis and Irene, they don't do any pre-cuts anymore, but I was able to secure a lot of their pre-cuts from lines that are long gone. So check out this photo of, um, that I took. This is just a portion of it, like a small portion. This is a styled photo uh, of all of these gorgeous pre-cuts. So we have fat quarters, uh, 10 inch squares and then two and a half inch strip rolls and uh, most of them were from times before I even started selling Louis and Irene but some I do remember including uh, there's one in there that was really my first my first uh, line so that's really cool so not only do we have these one-of-a-kind pre-cuts uh, that you're not likely to find elsewhere but we have them at a very special price. So they are all $29.95. Yes, so wh whatever it is. So I'm gonna go through them and show you. So none of this stuff is live yet in the store. So don't go try and find it right now. We're gonna make it live right after the show. So you can just lean back <laughs> and relax and enjoy looking through them. You can make some notes, but I just wanted to show you these first. So I'm gonna start actually with um, the 10 inch squares because we have, um, we have four different 10 inch square packs. These are so cool. Oh. And by the way, I set some aside for myself. So we're starting with this one, it's called Whatever the Weather. And this is kind of one of those uh, that has the small prints. What's really great about the pre-cuts, the 10 inch squares and the jelly rolls, or not, I'm not gonna call them jelly rolls, the two and a half inch rolls, is they included some of their bumbleberries that uh, coordinate. So there's bumbleberries mixed in with the fabrics. So not only are there 15 different prints, but also uh, an array of uh, coordinating bumbleberries. So it's really cute. So it's the four seasons. So we have winter, we have spring, and we have summer and fall all in one uh, whatever the weather so really cute small prints all small prints so this could be done in so many different things then we have small things by the sea this is actually this print in particular of course puffins was the one that caught my eye and and um, drew my radar over to Louis and Irene and just I had to have this so again we have bumbleberries and then all kinds of little small things by the sea we have sandcastles we have octopus and of course puffins yes um, seals shells uh, all kinds of fun stuff so 15 different prints plus the coordinating bumbleberries and then we have the panthera this is really cool with with bumbleberries as well but it has kind of a jungle theme but really cool prints in between this is a cool colorway too with these greens and pinks and so very colorful and fun lions tigers and jungle stuff <laughs> jungle stuff and uh, last but not least, we have Littendale, which is a just beautiful colorway. I, I snatched one of these. So this is uh, very various greens and blues, just beautiful prints. 
along with the bumbleberries. Um, great kind of sceneries of, I guess, Littendale. I've never been there, so I'm sure it is. Maybe some of you folks from the UK could um, enlighten us about what that is, if, that, if um, it's a real place. I'm sure it is, and what it's all about. I didn't do my research, so sorry. But this is beautiful, all kinds of greens and blues. So these are the 10 inch squares we have. Then we have um, fat quarters. So we have fat quarter packs. This is Panthera, and the fat quarter packs do not have the bumbleberries. They have the 15 pieces, which, so 15 pieces from the line. Panthera, we have, we have um, by, uh, Small Things by the Sea, and we have Whatever the Weather, and Littendale. And then we have one more, which is actually one of the first lines we got in, Winter in Bluebell Woods. Beautiful uh, kind of wintry scenes in uh, kind of very soft colors, muted colors, but beautiful grays, blues, um, and taupes. So those are the fat quarters. And just to tell you, if you're wondering what you can do with 15 fat quarters, um, check out the super size Nina behind me, this one on the wall, <laughs> the lap size, super sized, uh, not super size Nina, sorry, super size steamy window, steamy window super size. So our new, new pattern, steamy window super sized. I, 15 fat quarters make the lap size. So one pack makes a lap size quilt. So those are our fat quarters. And then we have rolls, two and a half inch strip rolls. If you're not, if you had fun making strip joints, you're going to love these. And we have even more variety. So we have um, the same ones. We have Littendale and we have Small Things by the Sea. And then we have, uh, uh, no, that's not, oh, whatever the weather, whatever the weather. So same as I showed you. And then we have Panthera. So we have those four, but then we have other ones. Uh, this one, Cocktail Party, of course, this was one of the lines that I, first ones I ordered from Louis and Irene. Love it. Fabulous. Uh, so this is Cocktail Party. And then we have Poodle and Doodle. Love this. So we got cats and dogs and um, kind of a little bit of a French theme to it. I think there's poodles and cats in this, beautiful colors. We have from Old Hairy Rock, so this is kind of a nautical theme, but with a kind of a really cool colorway. So blues, pinks, turquoise, um, really nice light colors. And then we have one more, Jolly Spring. So this one is a very springy. It has um, some gnomes, bunnies, snails, really cute stuff, some mushrooms and really cute things for spring. So this is Jolly Spring. So those are all of the different, we have eight different two and a half inch strip rolls, four different 10 inch squares, and then uh, six, what was it, five or six uh, of the fat quarter bundles. So five, five different fat quarter bundles. And of course this is only, only $29.95 and until supply, while supply lasts. I have a feeling that um, these are going to be quite hot, and uh, I understand it. Believe me, that's why I shopped early. That's why I shopped early. <laughs> I got my stacked away. So, very excited about these. But that's not all. That's not all. So, along with these pre-cuts, we already had a lot already in the store. So, I decided we're putting the, all of those on 25% off. Everything, every pre-cut, we have 5-inch squares, 10 inch squares, and then we have uh, maybe one uh, two and a half inch strip pack, but mostly uh, 10 inch squares and five inch squares available. So check that out. Whatever we have available is 25% off. Now, again, settle down, relax. It will all be live after the show. It's not live right now. All right. Uh, but you know what? That's not all. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. So. More? There is more. So I also decided to add a bunch of great stash builders to our sale section. So we have lots of great uh, stash builders on sale now that have been uh, reduced price, great fabrics. 
And um, since many of those came in before I started to pull, you know, the one yards to, to go with it so you can see, get, see the coordinates, I thought I would pull these out and do a fabric pull with them because I know how you like doing how you like when I do that. So I'm starting with this one. This is our coffee shop. Coffee shop, I'm just going to pull this out. I'm not going to show it all the way, but I'm going to pull it out like this just so I can show you the coordinates with it. So it is a 12 piece bundle, all things coffee and croissants. So uh, let's start with, I started with a light to kind of pull similar lights. Now of course we have one of the prints that is in, in this line that is kind of a coffee, coffee, um, coffee beans. It's called Coffee Shop Light Beans. So that is a great background if you needed a background. Um, then we have, I pulled out this one, which is Life's Recipes Texture Ivory, because it has some of the gray that is in here all over, um, some of the darker taupes that are in here. Like it's kind of like it's been coffee stained a little bit. And then the Canvas Antique White is also the perfect coordinate with um, the other lights in the bundle. So you can add a couple of these, and then you have a light and dark bundle ready to go. Um, and then I thought I would do some of the some of the browns, the chocolates and the browns. So it goes from black to medium brown to lighter brown. And so I did just a variety of, of, of those tones. Started with a full black, this sun print crochet. I love it because it has a lot of gray in it, so it's not so harsh, but it goes as black as the blackest, darkest black in here. We have the Bumbleberries Black is also a great one, nice and dark. And then of course, Grunge Espresso, perfect with the coffee bundle. And then two lighter browns, the Canvas Coffee Bean, of course. And then um, Jot Dot Brown with all the different hues of, of brown. I thought these would work really great with the coffee bundle. Now, if you wanted to add uh, an accent or bring out something that is not really in the bundle, but there's that color in there. So like if you wanted a focus fabric, put this over here. Of course, I would pull out the golden tones in the croissants and in the kind of uh, caramel macchiatos and all that stuff. So uh, deco stitch pecan praline is perfect. And then the bumbleberries dark gold, those two work perfectly if you wanted to pull one out or even just add a little gold to it. And then it just really warms this up. It's already a really warm bundle <laughs> being that it is coffee. It's hot coffee. <laughs> but um, so we took photos of all these. We added it to a blog post. So if you want to take some time and check it out some more, it is on the blog um, or at least will be soon. And like I said, the easiest way to find this once the show is over, it'll be in the sales section of the shop. So just go to the sales section. All right, so next one up is actually two of them that have a very similar fabric pull. Um, they, can, they could be intermixed. Uh, this one is called It's Elementary. So it is kind of a science themed, very uh, black and white with some great primary colors in it. So I started with, uh, of course, fabrics that have a similar feel to these. If you wanted to add more to it, Rainbow Sprinkles Black Buttons and Rainbow Sprinkles Butterflies would be a perfect mix in here. And same thing with the lights. We have the Sprinkles butter Butterflies in the white and the Rainbow Sprinkles Hearts and Stars in the white. So that would be great mi mixing in there. And if you wanted to pull out a color, you could pull so many different ones. Any one of these would work. We have red, and my favorite match was Thatched Crimson. If you wanted to pull out orange, the Spotted Tangerine is a great match with these oranges in here. Uh, if you wanted to do some of these greens, the Speckled Emerald Green is really great, and of course it has a little sparkle. That's extra. We have Canvas Turquoise, if you wanted to play with some of the turquoise in there. Put that here. And then if you wanted the blue, the jot dot dark blue was a perfect match. So you could mix it all together if you wanted to a more colorful quilt. What a great quilt for a kid. Um, very colorful. Uh, if they love science, you have a little bit of that sprinkled in, but some, some basics to kind of make it even more colorful and fun. So these colors, uh, 
Actually, for this next bundle, these would really also work. All of these would work for that. But, of course, since I have more fabrics, I need to do a different, a different pull. So, putting these aside, and that is another great one for kids. It's called Love of the Game. And this is our sports bundle. And already a great price. So, it's even better now that it's on sale. And, of course, again, we have limited quantities. So, until supplies last. So, this one I just went with, kind of pulled uh, one color trying to pull all the colors from these really colorful fabrics. So it's great to mix in some basics to really calm things down. You don't want to put all of this in. It might get too wild. So I started with the blue. We got Circle Burst Dark Royal. Really love this royal blue. Um, it really is great with every kind of jersey color or school colors. Canvas Orange Peel for the orange baskets, basketballs. We have to have a good grass color, so canvas pine needle is a nice green that is not too harsh. Um, and then we have a red, also the circle burst, burst cherry, there's specks of red in the helmets and the jerseys. And um, yellow, there's a little bit of yellow, so if you wanted to add a little bit of that, the grunge lemon drop is just nice and bright, works well. And then two bumbleberries, we ha have the tiki how turquoise to kind of play off of both the lights in here and the dark tones of the turquoise and then also the bumbleberry smoky blue is kind of a great match with um, the ice color and some of the grays in the in the helmets and things so that is my game um, what's it called love of the game but look at this all of these would work too <laughs> how fun is that so let's pull these aside and move on I got more I got more stuff for you so I'm just going to stay a little bit organized. Uh, otherwise, you should see sometimes after the show what kind of mess is uh, happening around here. It's not pretty. All right, next one up is a um, line by Ruby Star called What Not. And this one is just a, a mixture of cool, unique prints. And in very unique colors, so very soft, but we have all kinds of just toys and random household items. We have toothbrushes, we have uh, boom boxes, and house plants, a little bit of um, some lettering, and a little bit of sparkle. There's always a little sparkle in most of the uh, Ruby Star fabrics. So I pulled colors that would work really well in, with it. And um, then I pulled two colors if you wanted to do something with a background. So uh, I'm going to start with those. So if you wanted a background with this, something that contrasts it nicely, I actually would do a, a dark background. So I started with grunge lead because it has a little hue of blue in it. So it goes really well with the blues and, and teals. And then I love this one too. And this is by Ruby Star because it's speckled. And the teal navy would be a great, great background for these. Because it has that blue tone also and a little speckles of sparkle, of course. So I love both of these with it, depending on if you want sparkles or not. And who doesn't, really? All right, so I started with some blues to add to it. Spectrostatic Deep Sea is a perfect match with this color, which is not a lot of, of in here, so it'll be a great addition. Uh, another one is the Prisma Pakoda Gem, kind of the darker, the medium teals. And then we have the light ones, the Deco Stitch Teal Fog is really a good match with the lighter tones and um, the medium tones. So these three blues. We have a couple of pinks. Uh, the Deco Stitch Pink Powder and Peach Whisper. There's not big much of a difference between them. There's just a little more peach, but it actually matches this perfectly. So these are the darker, and then these are the lighter. You can see how they kind of really harmonize with each other. So these were great. And then of course I felt like I needed to pull out some of these golds. So we have Spectrostatic Spicy Mustard that works really well with these golds. And then the Grunge Marigold, a little bit more yellow, so it kind of works well with this one as well. And so all of this would make a really beautiful quilt. I can imagine it. I can really imagine it. 
and it could be anything add a background or just use those whatever you uh, whatever tickles your fancy whatever pattern you want to make really truly and so we have one more oh, maybe two more two more this one is another ruby star and another one that you know I didn't pull for this one is called rise and it's on sale so lots of sparkle in this so a lot of gold accents and uh, rose gold accents in this line but kind of more really modern bigger prints kind of cool my daughter loves this bundle um, so what I started with is, is kind of the lighter tones that light kind of light um, not quite taupe I would call it more khaki I don't know so we have the dash flow wheat which has both of the darker tones and the lighter tones in it which I love using and then of course the speckled natural so I pulled a bunch of speckled because that is what they designed um, to go with all of their all of their um, or, or their lines so it's just they will always match perfectly so then I did so I kind of did a um, a ruby star basic and then a non ruby star basic and you can see how it's all, they all work so you can always don't be scared of mixing something that's not from the same line or from the same designer all right we're going into the pinks so speckled berry really pulls out the bright pinks in here but so would the spectrostatic magenta so if you have either of those they either one would work well next one up I pulled the speckled bright blue for the brighter blue tones in here and then the grunge horizon would work just as well because it has a little bit of dark in here too and it would work really well next up will be the orange so the orange tone is in there we have speckled metallic warm red it's a really a dark deep orange so it's very nice and warm um, but so would also the spotted quotation clementine a nice dark rich orange so either of those would work and then we're going to finish off with the darkest tones in here the speckled teal navy obviously great fit but so would the bumbleberries basic indigo be so either one would work well so you can choose staying in the same designer or get out of the box maybe you have some of these if you bought a yard, one yard in the past and used a little bit of it always able to mix it in so this is rise by ruby star all right so this next one is actually i have something to show you too i have a project to show you that is awesome so this bundle is called homegrown salsa and i know it's not that long since we got it in and you're getting it on a little sale special so this is so yummy i mean i am hungry looking at it I think we need to have some salsa and chips tonight. <laughs> uh, late night snack. Agree. Agree. <laughs> okay. So I kind of went, went first and just pulled out colors in here. And there are two prints that we have in one yards that go with this line. One being this black print. I'll show you that on a bigger, um, bigger scale. I just love this. I think this would be great for napkins or anything like uh, basket liners, aprons, apron pockets, whatever. Uh, love it. Love it. Love it. So this is the print we have in the uh one yards and then also we have this the homegrown salsa blackboard which is here so we have that in one yard so obviously this will be a great addition but just to pull out some of these colors if you wanted to mix them up i started with green because there's uh, just this one green print and this was a perfect match dimples fern i love the variety of greens and it's just like a perfect mix in with all of these and then I did a little bit of yellow because we have little specks of yellow. Um, canvas bumblebee. It's great. Red, of course. And this was my favorite red with these. This is a Bumbleberry's post box red. And then we had to do a black and uh, a cream. And so the fren canvas French vanilla was a perfect match with these creams. And then the circle burst charcoal just because it has the darkest tones and some of the gray tones as well. And um, Karn, one of our gals, made these really awesome Friday Fiesta placemats. How cute are these? These are so easy to make and so fast. So how great would it be to make a set of placemats? And you could make trivets and 
napkins, basket liners from the rest of it. I could even see this print being um, the big, big multi print if you wanted a little more action in your placemats. It would just be really, really cute. So love what she did here. So great idea for a project out of these. So that is um, what I did. What I did in the warehouse today had fun playing and pulling colors Taco to go Tuesday. with all these. Taco Tuesday. Oh, that's Taco Tuesday. I know that's perfect. That's a perfect bundle for today. So um, that's not all. Now I'm trying to find my notes so I remember everything I need to tell you. And I, they're completely lost in the mess. I'm telling you, they're completely lost in the mess. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I, I don't even know where I put them. Maybe they're on the floor. Yes, thank you. Can I, can I get yours, your copy, please? That's what happens. I'm just going to have a sip. Cheers, everybody. I just, just, just wanna, don't want to miss anything. Because we're celebrating. We're celebrating. All right, so, yes, I need that one. Exactly. Well, we have pre-cuts, and we have fresh new sale bundles. But I'm not done. I'm not done yet. Saving the best for last. Because we made some very special mystery bundles this week. If you've seen our post, you might have noticed. So we have what we call mega mystery bundles. So the mega mystery bundles have three extra half yards in them than normal. So they have 15 half yards but they're the same price as our basic 12 piece, just for the celebration. So what we did is, yes, 15 different fabrics in here. You don't get to choose, obviously it's mystery, but you know what? Let me just prove it to you. It's great stuff. It's fabulous stuff. It's, some of it is even very, very new. We have the um, bonjour, a piece from bonjour. So these are pieces that when we cut our fabrics, there's a piece from Rise, um, there's all kinds of great basics in between, Louis and Irene. So quality fabrics, but you just don't get to decide what you get. And when we cut bundles, when we have leftovers, sometimes bolts are not uneven. So when we're cutting the bundles, there might be one or two or three or five prints that have a little more. So those get left extra. So we make mystery bundles from those. And now we have these 15 piece mystery bundles for only $55. Do you know what that adds up? Per yard of quilt shop quality fabric, some even brand spanking new, it's only $7.33 per yard. So I think that's a deal. Um, we made quite a few of these, but I know they're gonna go fast. So I just wanted to tell you, they will be live. They're not live yet. They will be live right after the show. So what do you think of all this? Is this uh, great celebrating? Enough celebrating for everybody? Yay, fireworks. That's so cool. We have five fireworks, our own fireworks show for a Tipsy Tuesday episode. How cool is that? Uh, but of course, we are not going to end yet. We got to have our giveaway winner, our live winner of the $25 gift card. You can go shopping. Um, Whoever it is, make sure you send us a quick email or a message through the website and we'll get you your gift card. And the lucky one is Vicky Epen. Hi, Vicky. She's, uh, she's a friend and a neighbor, pretty much. I know, 20, 30 minutes away, but Vicky, congrats. You get a $25 gift card. So um, you can go shopping. Send us a quick message. Congrats, congrats. All right. Um, we have to finish with our giveaway question so that um, we can have, give out another gift card next week. So have you had fun tonight? Has it been fun? <laughs> I hope so. I've had fun. Have you had fun? Fireworks. I mean, yeah. we have fireworks. It's a great time. <laughs> Hundred shows. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I had a chance to have a little sip on Tuesday. Ah, uh, yeah, you got a little cocktail on a tipsy Tuesday. That's Shh, a change. Don't tell <laughs> well, of course, our question, giveaway question that you have to answer to be entered in our giveaway for the second $25 gift card is appropriate. What is your favorite cake? Did you see that photo of the cake? That's, a, that's my kind of cake. 
Uh, so my favorite cake, I, you know, I'm not much of a basic cake person. Uh, it needs to be quite bougie, <laughs> as he calls it. It needs to be bougie cake. So I'm not much of a cake person. So any kind of like regular birthday cakes, I don't really, I, I'll eat them, but they're not like the best. So I'll say uh, one of my best friends in Iceland is a, an amazing baker. So she makes this one cake for very special occasions, which is like seven layers of this uh, almond meringue and uh, uh, buttercream in between and then marzipan on top of that. That I will eat all day long. <laughs> and probably that cake in the photo like a French chocolate cake, something like that. It has to be, have all kinds of stuff on it. Just be simple. Chocolate cake would be just great. And so chocolate cake, white frosting or, or, or chocolate frosting? Chocolate or do frosting. you want like a, like chocolate a, frosting. like a, um, mm -hmm. German chocolate cake or something like that? Nope. No? Just basic chocolate cake. Or that special strawberry cake that you made oh that we ate yeah i'm not much of a baker but i do make that that's really good actually you ate it in one day <laughs> <laughs> don't tell people that <laughs> i was about to go give half to the neighbors and he's like just wait just wait we didn't eat it in a day we ate it in a weekend it was bad but it was really good <laughs> it was worth it we've talked about this cake before anyways um so that is all you have to do tell us your favorite cake and you'll be entered in the giveaway um just put it in the comments and we'll randomly pick uh, a winner during our uh, for our next show and announce it on our next show which will be next week on a monday people this is going to mess everybody up we have to be uh we're busy for tuesday something that was planned way back so we have to have our tipsy monday next week <laughs> tipsy monday <laughs> Uh, so remember, Monday, I'll, send, I'll post a reminders and put it in the newsletter, but we'll be on Monday next week, uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, and that is May 3rd, May 3rd, Monday, May 3rd. Our next Happy Friday show will be this coming Friday, of course, April 30th, so don't miss that one. I'll see you here at um, 3 p.m. for our Friday show. But that is it for us. 100 are, it is in the books. Number 100 is in the books. Cheers to that. And we'll see you for the big 101 next Monday. Cheers, everybody.